I'd like to say hello to everyone. Thank you for joining Restoration Christian Fellowship Church uh, Bible Study on uh, November 1st, 2023. On behalf of our pastor and church family, we welcome you to our broadcast on tonight. Uh, we continue on our study of the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 1 through 3 on tonight. Uh, last week, we covered an introduction, and we uh, covered, amen, being a follower of God and imitators of Christ. And then also we uh, follow God by loving as Christ loved. And we were talking about Christ's sacrifice and how he uh, sacrificed his life for us. And we are to sacrifice for others as well. We're going to continue um, on that part two. It says part two, uh, and it starts with the words on page three, uh, page 44. It should be point two. The words um, should be where we start at tonight. And uh, yeah, the words Christ gave himself is where we're going to start on page 3.2, on page 3 of your packet. Uh, we're going to open up in prayer and then we'll go ahead and get started. Once again, we welcome all those that are on um, live with us and those who will watch this in the future. We thank you for joint, tuning in and uh, watching our uh, Bible study. In Jesus' name, we come before you tonight, God, just thanking you for who you are in our lives we give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise on tonight, God. God, we're so thankful for who you are in our lives and what you have done for us on tonight, oh God. God, how you watch over us each and every day, oh God. God, we're so grateful and so thankful, oh God. We're thankful for where we live at, oh God, uh, as we look at what's happening around our world, oh God, in the Middle East and in Ukraine and um, other areas which are uh, facing war each and every day. We're so grateful to live in a nation where we don't have to look up and worry about bombs or uh, worrying about being shot or worrying about uh, being kidnapped, oh God, right off um, your, your your blocks or your streets, even though some of that stuff is happening in America, oh God, but each and every day, many people around the world are faced with those uh, type of tragedies each and every day. So God, we thank you for who you are once again, we thank you for the United States. We thank you for um, our government. We thank you for all um, uh, our government is doing for Israel. We continue to pray for President Biden. We pray for all those, amen, that are um, in agreement with him to support Israel. Oh God, and we just thank you, oh God, that, um, that the enemy will not win in this situation, but God, your will will prevail. Uh, you said that told us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and we will continue to pray for that peace, oh God. We will pray that the bombs will stop, oh God. We will pray, oh God, that the violence will, will stop, the attacks will stop, oh God. God, we just pray, oh God, for that nation, oh God, that you will continue to spare it, that you will continue to cover it, and that you will continue to watch over all of those people, oh God. Not just, just those um, Jews in uh, Jerusalem, but around the world, oh God, they're being attacked. Uh, right here in America as well. We just pray for their peace. We pray for their protection. And God, we just thank you for just stepping into this situation. We also pray for the families that have lost loved ones on both sides. Oh God, war is not pretty. It is an ugly situation. Uh, there's uh, lives innocently lost. So we pray, oh God, for those lives, oh God, in Israel and in the Gaza Strip, oh God. God, we know Hamas is using... Um, uh, uh, innocent people as uh, as protection and shields, oh God. So we just pray, oh God, for all those that have lost loved ones uh, due to war, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, we thank you on tonight for our pastor. We thank you for um, her guidance, her leadership, oh God, her presence, oh God, her, the spirit that you put in within her to be our pastor, oh God. We thank you for her leadership, and we continue to pray for her protection, her um her um, strength, her energy level, oh God. God, we just pray for everything that um, concerns her, that you will perfect in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, oh God, for just watching over our pastor. We thank you for the uh, Restoration Christian Fellowship Church members. We thank you for the ministers, the deacons, oh God, all the lay people, oh God. God, we ask you to uh, cover and protect everything that concerns us as well. And we continue to pray for unity, oh God, that we will continue to, to be a church united and, and unity, oh God, for the common good, oh God, to bring about change in our homes, change in our communities, oh God, changes around the world. So God, we thank you for restoration. God, we also thank you, oh God, for all those that may be sick on tonight. We pray, oh God, that you touch their bodies on tonight, oh God. God, we ask you to heal, oh God, those that are facing uh, flu symptoms, um, 
COVID, oh God, whatever it may be, God, God, we pray for their healing on tonight, oh God, those suffering with major disease on tonight, God, we lift them up to you on tonight, oh God, God, we know that you are a healer, you are a miracle worker, oh God, God, where miracles are needed, oh God, we pray in advance for those miracles, oh God, and we give you praise and glory and honor, oh God, oh God, for bringing that those families and those individuals, oh God, peace and comfort during this time that they're facing, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for just healing, oh God, broken hearts on tonight, oh God, healing broken spirits on tonight, oh God, oh God, just renewing minds on tonight, oh God, oh God, we just thank you for doing that on tonight, oh God, those that have given up hope on tonight, God, we pray for them, oh God, that they will have hope, oh God, that, do, that you will point them in the right direction again, oh God, that they will choose to live again, oh God, those that are contemplating suicide, oh God, uh, facing depression, oh God. Uh, we just pray for them on tonight, oh God. Oh God, uh, we just pray, oh God, that they will uh, meet someone that will help lead them to you, first of all, and not only lead them to you, oh God, but lead them to be able to get off maybe the streets, oh God, but to get out of that situation of depression and the feeling of uh, less than in the name of Jesus. And God, we just thank you for all that you're doing once again. We ask you to bless this class on tonight. Bless every word that will be spoken on tonight, oh God. Oh God, we ask that it will be a blessing to each and every one of us and, and to the hearers that will hear this message in the future, oh God. Oh God, word my mouth as we teach the lesson. And God, once again, touch each and every individual that will share, oh God, in the class on tonight, oh God, that they will speak words, oh God, um, that will encourage us all. So God, we thank you for this class on tonight. And we just uh, ask for your anointing to fall fresh through these airways on tonight and being, bring a blessing to this class. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Truly, we thank God uh, for the class on tonight. Uh, as stated, we're on page uh, 3.2, the words Christ gave himself at, uh, as an offering. Uh, that's where we're going to pick up. I'm going to read first in your hearing, uh, Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 4 on tonight. Uh, this is probably where we're going to get to up to four, and we may get to five, but we'll see how we go. Uh, starting at verse one, reading on, uh, the King James Version, it reads, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and have and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor, sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetedness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, uh, not covenant, uh, but rather giving of thanks. Amen. And as stated, we uh, left off on uh, point two last week. Um, some of the things we covered last week, we were talking about the introduction of uh, uh, the believers are to walk following God. That's the series that we're in. Uh, we're going to be, uh, the first seven verses are going to be talking about, uh, amen, the believer is to walk following God. Amen. Um, this is one of the uh, greatest challenges in all the word of God. Um, he's asking us to pattern our, li our lives after himself. Amen. The believer is to follow the person of God. The believer is to walk through life Amen. Following God. Amen. And then uh, our first point last week, amen, was, amen, um, the believer is to follow God and follow God in such a way, amen, that we would uh, imitate um, our Savior Jesus Christ and imitate God and have the God kind of um, life in our life. Amen. And I read that to us, uh, what we studied last week, the believer follows God first, by becoming a follower of God. And then we talked about, note the word uh, here means to become a follower of God. The uh, idea is that of commitment, attachment, devotion, allegiance, attention. Before a person can be a follower of God, he must commit and attach himself to God. He must surrender and devote his life to God and then begin to follow after God. Amen. And then we also talked about um, that word followers in uh, that particular verse means imitators. Amen. 
Uh, some prefer the translation that we are to become imitators of God. Note the phrase as dear children. And then we talked about how just as children learn by imitating their parents, so we are to learn by imitating God. Amen. We are to learn by imitating God. The very idea that we are to be followers and imitators of God is a bold idea. Just imagine scripture boldly proclaims that we are to become like God. Amen. Uh, Matthew 5, 48 states, Christ said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Levit Leviticus 19 and 2 says, God demanded, ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16 states, uh, Peter charged, but as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And then we left off last week talking about uh, um, uh, the second uh, point is uh, uh, to love, amen, as God loved, amen, as Christ loved, amen. Uh, the believer follows God, second, by loving as Christ loved. And then we talked about two things that um, Christ noted about his um, death and uh, what he uh, did for us. And the first thing was he gave himself for us. Uh, we were talking about how Christ died, amen, for us. He died in our place last week in a deeper study. Uh, it was talking about the sacrifice that Christ made for us and how he took on, amen, our place in death, amen, the punishment that we deserved, amen. He took it on for him. He lived a sinless life, amen, to redeem us back to our Father God. He took, amen, everything that was due us, he took on for himself, amen, to redeem us back to our Father God, amen. He uh, um, uh, bore our sins. Um, he did everything that he took on the penalty of that sin debt. He took on the death of that sin debt. He paid the price for us to be redeemed as we covered last week. Uh, as stated today, amen, we're going to continue that theme of um, uh, sacrificing and love, where we're going to pick up now talking about, amen, um, the words God, Christ gave himself as an offering, amen. So the first two points, once again, as followers of God, amen, we are to um, uh, follow God. Secondly, amen, we are to um, uh Follow God as um, as uh, as Christ loved us, Amen. In love, Amen. Follower of God, and then follow God by loving. And then this next one, um, we're still talking about sacrificing and love. Here is uh, the words Christ gave of Himself in an offering, Amen. And let me just bring that back up. Uh, point two is the words. Uh, Christ gave himself an offering to God for a sweet smelling savior. Smell gives a higher meaning to the to the death of Christ than just meeting our need. The word offering refers to the burnt offerings of the Old Testament found in Leviticus 1 and 1. The burnt offerings, amen, was given to God not merely because of sin, amen, but because a person wished to glorify God and honor God. A person wished to wish to show his love and adoration to God. This is an aspect of Christ's death that is often overlooked. An aspect that raise, rises far above, amen, the mere meet, meeting of our need. And given himself as an offering to God, Christ was looking beyond our need to the majestic responsibility of glorifying God. This means that his first purpose, glory to God, this means his first purpose was to glorify God. He was concerned primarily with doing the will of God, with obeying God. God had been terribly dishonored by the first man, Adam, and by all of those who followed after him. Jesus Christ wished to honor God by showing that at least one man thought more about God's glory than of anything else. Christ wished to show that God's will meant more than any personal desire or ambition that he might have glory. He said, the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father have given 
commandment to die for man, even so I do arise. Let us go hence, John 14, 31. The point is this, the believer is to walk in love just as Christ has loved us and has given himself as an offering and sacri sacrifice to God. The believer is to love so much that he, I'm sorry, he gives himself as an offering and sacrifice. There's to be no limit to the offerings and sacrifice of our lives to God and to men. Remember, God's love, agape love, that's that sacrificial love, that love that goes above and beyond. Amen. That's the love, amen, uh, is always in acting in love. Amen. Remember, God's love, agape love, is always acting in love. Amen. And we are should be that same way. Amen. Acting and loving as we're being imitators and followers of God. Amen. This is something where uh, it, it comes, it hit me hard, hard in studying this the last few weeks. That you know is is uh, more to this love thing um, than we say. Okay, uh, uh, um, I love you, brother. You know um, the men has a a, a chain now, and uh, brother Scott sends out this text every morning. And every morning, every man and not every man, but all just about all the men, we respond back that we love each other. Uh, have a great day in the Lord. Love you. Be strong. And all these different things. Amen. So it's. The love that God is talking about is just not a, 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 um, a superficial love, but it's a love that truly want to bless and pray that those men, those women, all the ones we are praying for will have a great day because the love we have for them is that sacrificial love where we will go over and above to support our brothers in Christ and our sisters in Christ. Amen. Because that is the agape kind of love, that unconditional love, that sacrificial love that Jesus had that God had for us, amen, and we should have that for each other as well, amen. When we look at the scriptures, uh, to, to uh, as I always say, to solidify this point that we're covering about Christ being an offering and a sacrifice to God for us, uh, Ephesians 5 and 2 says, as Christ also have loved us and have given himself for us, amen, Ephesians 5, 2. John 13, 35 says, by this shall all men Know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another, John 15, 35. And that one is a very, very big one, amen. Uh, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, amen. How will the world know that we are disciples of God? By our love for each other, amen. If we don't have and show love toward another fellow believer or another Christian, amen, or even someone in our workplace or wherever it may be on the street, amen, Um. If we're not showing that agape love, that sacrificial love, amen, the world would not see us as God wants them to see us, amen. We must have the love of God working in us and through us, amen, to bring about change in wherever we may be. I think I see Deacon Kevin's hand before I read the next scripture. Yes, Elder Kenny, I um, am going... And what you were saying about following, um, as I was looking at where it says, and giving himself as an offering to God, Christ was looking beyond our need to the majestic responsibility of glorifying God. That means that his purpose was to glorify God. Um, and his primary concern was doing the will of God, uh, mm -hmm. with obeying God. Um, yeah. One of the words I learned about following um that it described it as obeying in order to follow God, you had to be obedient to God. And I was thinking about when I was in the military, as, as well as Lou uh, knows, um, you know, you had to pledge allegiance to God at that time when we came up, I don't know about today, but you pledge allegiance to God uh, and to the country uh, and to the military uh, because they didn't need anybody you know, how are you going to follow your platoon leader, uh, the generals, um, the captains, if you're not willing to be obedient? It, you know, you can't have disobedient soldiers because that would affect other soldiers. And and God is, you know, uh, Christ was saying uh, when he was glorifying God, he was being obedient mm -hmm. to doing the will of God. Um, so I, I found that 
very interesting that one of the descriptions of follower of a follower is you have to be obedient to the follower. How can you follow someone unless you are being obedient? And we know scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice. Um, so I just want to point that out. Uh, in order to be a follower, you got to be a follower to your leaders of, you know, of the church of, of Christ. You always got to be willing to, to be obedient in order yeah. to succeed in everything yeah. that, you know, the church is trying to do, the Lord is trying to do. Uh, if you work in your workplace, you got to be obedient. If you don't follow the policies, um, they can let you go, you know? Yeah. So the importance, I just want to point out the importance of yeah. being obedient in, in order to follow someone. Amen. Yeah. And that, that was a, a very good point, Deacon Kevin, because when you think about, uh, um, like you said, being obedient, Christ always uh, stressed the fact that he came, amen, to do his father's will, amen. And now and what we're studying tonight is saying how his will will lead to glorifying God. And our lives, amen, if we are walking in the will of God and walking and talking and doing the things that he are stressing that in these lessons that he wants us to do, we're going to bring glory to him as well, amen, because um, we're following, we're listening, we're being obedient. Amen. Um, one of the greatest things is, you know, when we, we read these scriptures and uh, one of the big th ones is like forgiveness, where he tells us to forgive those, amen, who despitefully use us or come against us or who don't love us. Amen. That's a, a, a command to love. Amen. And if we're if we say we're followers of Christ, but we're going to disregard that one, we're not glorifying God. Amen. So it's very, very important that we learn amen, to be obedient to what God's word is saying. It's not what we're saying or what the pastor is saying. God, through our pastors, are teaching us the word of God, how to live, how to be prosperous in this life as a believer, amen. It's just not some lame life, amen. We can live our best life in Christ, in this earth, amen, and it's going to get even better when we go on to glory, amen. But while we're here on this earth, amen, we want to be obedient to his word to bring him glory, Amen. To bring, amen, his name, amen, the, the glory that deserves. Amen. Uh, Lou, did I see your hand? Yes. Just on a, just a quick note, personal level, uh, me and Kevin had talked about this. And a certain someone who uh, said a prayer last week really touched the chord for me. And uh, it, um, the obedience forgiveness it uh it it kind of um got a ball rolling inside me and uh, uh people that i had been holding off on you know that inside of what i was feeling kept holding on to it just was eating away and thanks to uh you know last week a little you know prayer that that kind of gave me uh the nudge that i needed i think you know god must have spoke to my heart because it was definitely uh definitely good and Amen. uh you know that's just a my own little testimonial right there but and i thank you yes thank you so Amen. much thank you for sharing lou and that's the purpose of these meetings, amen, uh, to study God's word and then to build each other up, amen, whether it's through uh, words we may uh, comment on through the lesson, amen, or prayer, or just uh, uh, seeing each other's faces um, to see the smile since we're not in, in a um, church per se, amen. That's what it is, to build each other up, to strengthen each other, to give us the motivation to do things that we probably wouldn't do on our own, amen, or you know, you probably think in a different way, but yet someone may come out in the lesson, amen, that will encourage us to do it the way God wants us to do it. So it's a blessing to hear that. And then you were obedient to what you heard. That was the spirit of God inside of you, amen, convicting you and pushing you to do what he wants you to do. So thank you for sharing that, Brother Lou. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Um, anyone else have any thoughts before we move on to the next scripture? Uh, seem like you guys, as I always say, to hedge our wheaties for the day, um, or your your caffeine, amen. If not, we're going to go on to Romans twelve and nine, amen. We're talking about love. Let love be without uh, hypocrisy, abhor 
that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Amen. Once again, here it is. Amen. We're to 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 pull away, to disattach dis ourselves from those things that are evil. Amen. But we are to latch on. Amen. Cleave on to those things which are good, according to Romans 12 and 9. Anything that that uh, let love be without uh, dis dissimulation. Amen. That is hypocrisy. Amen. That is phony. Amen. We don't want to have a phony love, but amen. We want to have a true love. Amen. And we don't want to cleave to those things that are evil, but we want to, amen, cleave to those things which are good. Romans 12 and 9. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 3 and 12 says, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. There it is again. In the Lord, amen, the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward a, um, another and toward all men, amen. Not just our circles, not just our uh, clique, not just our church, but amen, we want to love all men, all races, all colors, all sizes, amen. We want to show the love of God as um, Christ has done for us. First Thessalonians 3 and 12. Uh, 1 Peter uh, 1 and 22 states, seeing ye have purified your souls, there it is again, deacon, and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unseen love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Amen. We can't be phonies once again. We must love and love our fellow man. Amen. Uh, with passion, amen, unsacrificial, uh, amen, whatever it costs, we are to share that love of God with each other and those that we come in contact with. First John 3 and 14, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not the, his brethren abideth in death, amen. That's the word of God, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brethren abide in death. First John 3, 16 and 18 says, hereby perceive we the love of God, uh, hereby perceive we the love of God, because we lay down, he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But all, whoso have this world's good and see his brother have need and shut up, up, shut up, up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in the world and in, in the word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen. And I love that scripture. Amen. It talks about if we say that we have love in us. Amen. Um, and we have the necessary means to be a blessing to someone, to help someone. Amen. We're to do it. Amen. Uh, we're not to, uh, to talk a good game, as they would say, amen, but we must be about what God wants us to do in the earth, amen, and that love, amen, is showing God, amen, how um, he is toward us as it is toward other people, and um, my, I was talking to my sister the other day, she's probably going to get on me, but we were talking about um, when she would pull up to, uh, to a light now, uh, the homeless are in uh, Dell City and at Fairfax a lot now, and they're coming up to the cars, trying to wash the windows, uh, trying to get a little extra money. Some people are in need. Some people are, as she stated, uh, phonies because, you know, she saw one walk away and get into a beautiful car and then the car counting the money that they had collected that day. But she still gave it out of her heart. Um, and then she was sharing that with how she was at a grocery store and how uh, the lady had a few things in the cart. And then um, my sister said that she would pay for it. And then it went from a few things to, oh, well, I need this and I need that and I need that. And before you know it, uh, it was a whole cart full of stuff. So my sister just asked, were you really hurting and or in need or are you out here just hustling? So I wanted to be a blessing to you, but you just took that blessing, amen, and, 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 the, and, and, and made me think about doing it because it's now you seem like you're being greedy, amen. Um, but she says she still did it. But that just showed me um, uh, the growth even in my sister. Amen. Uh, she she doesn't say that she she loves God and she uh, hasn't 
per se profess Jesus Christ, but I think God is working on her heart um, in this particular area as well as her giving. Amen. That it was a blessing that she said that uh, I don't have a problem with giving it if I have it. And that really blessed me to, to for my sister to say that, that if I have it and I see someone in need, that I would like to be a blessing. Um, amen. And I think that's how we need to be as Christians as well. When we see a need that we just don't talk again, but we go about trying to be about a solution for those that have a need that we come across. Amen. And that is having bowels of compassion. Amen. First John 4, 7 and 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth of, knoweth of God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen. First John 4, 7 and 8. And I love this last one to close this out on this particular one, talking about uh, Christ's sacrifice and a offering for us. If a man say, I love God and hate of his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he had never seen? Amen. First John 4 and 20. Amen. Once again, if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. He, I'm sorry, he is a liar, for he that loveth not his brother, whom he sees or hath seen, how can he say he loved God whom he hath never seen? Amen. So we must have love as Christ had love. Amen. We must walk in this love. Amen. And we must be willing to share this love with as many people that as we can. And it must be a sacrificial love and a, 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 a love, amen, that will bring glory to God in heaven. Amen. That's his plan for us in this port, portion of the lesson of following God. Amen. We follow God by letting our lives be a sacrifice, letting our lives, amen, uh, share the love of God with as many people as possible and offering of ourselves as much as possible to each other and to those that we come in contact with in this world. Amen. So I'm going to pause right there before we go into the next portion of uh, the believer's duty. Um, are there any thoughts or questions um, on this first part of the lesson that is dealing with us closing out? Um, Christ gave himself as an offering, a good, I mean, a, a sweet smelling savor for us. Amen. Any other, any questions or thoughts before I move on? Yes, it's Ricky. Um, I was just thinking over the scripture, the first John 3, 16 and 18. Um, I highlighted that, that we should be a blessing and not just in word or in tongue, but in deed also and in the truth. And, um, we can't just say we love people. We need to display it, to give it, to let them feel it. And I honestly could say that I I love everyone here. Um, Lou, I so much appreciate your honesty. Um, what I had mentioned before was that we all have issues and problems, but I appreciate that you're brave enough to talk about it. And that shows your growth and how much you are, love the Lord. You know, that you're not shy in it, that you have shortcomings and you sharing that helps us all to grow. So then it shows us how deep your love is and how much you love us. So I just want to return that to let you know that we love you as well. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Awesome. Uh, that's what it's all about. Amen. We have the love and the show this love. Amen. Outside of uh, the four walls, as they would say. Uh, Pastor, did you have your hand up as well? Yes, I was going to say um, the scripture that really touched me too was this one was that we know that we have passed from death unto life. Yes. Because we have love for the brethren. And then he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Yes. So, so it's 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 crucial that we love, you know. And and in light of what uh, Brother Lou was saying, 
the Bible tells us when we confess our faults one to another, mm -hmm. then we can be healed. Yeah. And like Sister Ricky was, you know, admonishing him because of the fact that he's sharing and bold to share. And that's a good thing, you know. Yes, it is. And, and you can't always do it with everybody all the time. You know, mm. some things, I mean, you, you, I mean, you can confess your sins and your faults, but some things, everything you don't confess to everybody. However, right. that the Bible tells us too, so we can be healed. Yes. Yeah. So that's a, a benefit of sharing because now healing is going to come your way. Deliverance mm. is going to come your way. Yes. Mm. Yes, Lord. Amen, Amen. Pastor. Amen. Thank well, you. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Mm. Oh, amen. Wow. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I, I'm sorry. I got a little lost in there because I was just... Uh, the spirit was moving amen um and that's a like i said uh these lessons have just just totally blessed me since we started doing them i think i've shared it over and over um it helps you really to understand god and what he wants for us as as his believers as his sons and daughters in the earth amen um you know many times we stop at you know salvation we stop at being believers Amen. But God wants us to be more than just, amen, a church people or church Sunday people. Amen. He wants us to be his people in the world. Amen. Outside of the four walls. And how do we get to be those people outside of these four walls is by having the love that we're talking about on tonight. How we are to sacrifice. Amen. How we to become imitators of God. Amen. Um, to, to, to do the things that God wants us to do to bring him glory. Amen. And how we're going to move into this next section section that talks about, amen, how we're to, 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 to once again, strip off, uh, move away, uh, don't have these things um, active in our lives as far as fornication, uncleanness, covetedness, all the things that we studied in um, chapter four, amen. So uh, these lessons are, are, um, are bringing, just as it did to the church of Ephesus, amen. Uh, uh, Paul was just instructing them how to be better believers, amen, how to be the people God wanted them to be in the earth, amen. And in my studies, amen, uh, uh, when you allow God to move in a situation in your life, in your church, or whatever it may be, amen, what happens is it brings him glory, it brings him honor, it brings him, amen, to uh to a level of of recognizing you and 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 loving you, amen, because you first loved him. Because the Bible tells us he first loved us, amen, but we must love him above all else, amen, and put him first in our lives. And when we do that, amen, we can encourage each other, motivate each other, and push each other to become the best men and women of God who God called us to be in the earth. So it's very, very exciting times for me and studying these books. And um, before I get to you, it gets to me. Amen. And I, I heard a pastor say not too long ago, he said, uh, if you're studying just to preach, then has God really called you? But are you studying to learn of God and to, to fellowship with him and to get into his presence? Then you begin to share out of what God has done for you. And then people would receive it because you first have received it. Amen. Some people study just to teach. Some people study just to say they know. But when we study, amen, we want to study because we want a, a, a freshness, a newness of what God is doing in our lives. And we want them active in our lives. Amen. So that's why we are here encouraging and motivating and studying the word of God together. Amen. Um, Deacon Kevin, did that do your hand up? Um, just quick, um, as you was reading those, um, scriptures, it was taking me back to all the times that overseer would quote, um, what he had on the back wall, back wall by the sound room. Oh, yes. That uh, no sacrifice, you know, mm, um, too great. And yeah. Too great. Yeah. As you was reading all the scriptures and sister Ricky and Lou and pastor, it just took me back to that quote that Overseer has on there. And it just makes you think about it even more as we're going through this Bible lesson. I mean, you really think about that quote even more uh, yes. for what we're going through because 
you know, there's nothing too great. Um, it's a small effort. price yeah. to, to pay. It yeah. really is. <laughs> yes, I think I at the, the end of all that, you know, it says, you know, um, so. to win the soul. Yes, exactly where I was going, Pastor. All that that um, at the end is and all that we're doing, amen, is to win that soul, win a soul to the to the kingdom. Amen. And to encourage each other. Amen. Um, any other points before we move on to point three, verse three? Uh, verse three read, amen, but fornication and all uncleanness or, or covetedness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Amen. Uh, the believer follows God third by being clean bodied. That is morally pure. If a believer is to follow and imitate God, he has to be morally pure. He has to keep his body clean. He cannot let it become dirty and spotted. Uh, Galatians 5, 19 and 21, it reads, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulsions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of that which I tell you before. As I have told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5, 19, and, uh, 19 through 21. So uh, we, are, we, are, I mean, we as believers, amen, we must uh, keep our bodies free of fornication. Amen. Uh, also, he has to keep um, his or her body free from uncleanness. When that's found in uh, Ephesians 4, 17 through 19. And it says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk no more as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past filling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to the work of uh, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Amen. Ephesians 4, 17 through 19. So the believer, amen, is to keep his body free from fornication, keep his body free from uncleanness. And thirdly here, he has to keep his body free of covetedness. And that's found once again in the scripture I just read, uh, Ephesians 4, 17 through 19. The importance of rejecting these sins Amen. They are not to be named even among us and not the command is imperative. Let it not be once named, not even mentioned once. Uh, you, that is, your body is never to engage in fornication, uncleanness, or covetedness, um, covetous acts. Note another fact, such things are not even to be talked about. They're not to be named, talked about, or mentioned in our conversations. Uh, immorality and indecent conversations and jokes are to be the farthest thing from the mind of the believer who follows God. God has nothing to do with such dirt and filth. Amen. Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. 1 Timothy 1, 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience, and of faith unfeigned. 1 Timothy 1 and 5, and 1 Timothy 5, 22, need to be partakers of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. 1 Peter 1, 22, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the, through the spirit unto unfeigned, unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart, Fervently, First Peter 1, 22. And lastly, 2 Peter 3, 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found in him peace without spot and blameless. 2 Peter 3, 14. So we see here, uh, yes, uh, um, my third point on tonight is the believer follows God thoroughly by keeping his body or her body clean. That is morally pure. 
Amen. We are believer. We as believers, amen, must imitate God, amen. As he is um, morally pure, amen, we must keep our bodies to be morally pure as well, amen. Uh, we cannot let it become dirty and spotted, amen. Once again, uh, we have to keep our bodies free of fornication, free of uncleanness, free, amen. And, and another point here on that second point, he has to keep his body free of uncleanness uh, for um, um, uh, even in our discussions and talks. Amen. We have to be careful what we say. Amen. And what we do, because sometimes, amen, uh, when, when we are trying to be uh, keep our thoughts and our minds clean. Amen. We can get into discussions. Amen. That could lead us to uncleanness. So we have to be careful even. Amen. What we allow people to say, um, the jokes they may tell. Um, uh, the situations that, you know, the little um, uh, things they may say at the water cooler or at the um, lunch line or whatever, you may laugh or or you may even join into the joke. Amen. God doesn't even want that amongst us as well. He wants us to be uh, free from all um, uh, dirtiness. Amen. Amen. He wants us, amen, to free ourselves from being unclean. Amen. To not let, amen, uh, these things be uh, mentioned among us. Things such as adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emotions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, murdering, amen, uh, drunkenness, revelings, amen, and such like of that which I told you before. I have also told you in time past, they that which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's Galatians 5, 19 through 21, which we're going to get to that even further as we go down in this chapter. So these things here. Uh, third thing, once again, is we must keep our bodies clean. Amen. Um, any thoughts before we move on to uh, four? And uh, point four talks about, I just got ahead of myself, being a uh, cleaned mouth. Amen. What Walking and watching what we do with our mouths. Any thoughts before I close with that on tonight? Yes, Deacon Kevin. Um, I had someone approach me. Um, and it's funny because I end up having to quote Galatians 5, 19 through 21 um, this week. And it was because he, he said his, his best friend's mother um, told him to stay away from the, the tarot cards, the sorcery, all that stuff. But he said his mother's a Christian but that she wouldn't seen a person that reads tarot cards. And it took me by surprise. And um, I didn't want to, you know, judge his mother, but I did want to quote the scripture, um, that scripture, and um, and say, tell him that he needs to pray for his mother, you know, in that situation. Um, it just surprises me that, you know, people who are Christians, but they still seek, um, tarot cards and their palms red and things like that. And I, you know, I guess a lot of times as we've already heard in the past, you get saved, <clears throat> excuse me, you get saved and then the buck stops there. There's no follow-up and in, in teaching and, and learning. And I guess you're not going further to, to, you know, learn the word of God as we're doing tonight so that you're not, you know, uh, doing the things that you did in the past. That's the only thing I could think of. Maybe you're not continuing, you know, um, your walk with God. Maybe you're not reading the word every single day because, you know, that I didn't, I don't understand when I hear a Christian that do those things. Um, but I know it's done. That's the reason why it's in the Bible because they must've done it back then. The church must've been doing it back then. And people still do it today. But I, I like I said, I didn't want to judge his mother, but I did want to bring up that scripture. Um, but yeah, that was, it's funny that this is there because it did come up. It, it did come come up about God. Yes. Uh, thank you, Deacon Kevin. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I think people still, church people still do that. Uh, you know, especially with the horoscopes and all the other different things, finding out how they day going to go is based upon what the paper says 
amen, instead of what God is saying for him. Uh, much prayer is needed. Um, as you were saying, you know, why would people do something still like that? Um, we're not sure, um, but I know um, what we're doing here is we're we actually being discipled, where we've been discipled in the things of God, amen. We're just being uh, taught the true word of God. And when you've been taught the true word of God, amen, it's going to bring about change where it should turn us away from those things that are harmful to us, amen. It will bring to light as well those things, amen, that are um, that are part of the enemy, how the enemy tricks and, and traps you into different things such mm -hmm. as that, as far as uh, witchcraft and the horoscopes and different things like that. Um, and, you know, um, I have to honestly say that, you know, I, I grew up where that, that's what they did, you know, in the morning, they went straight to the newspaper to find out how their day was going to go. And it was based upon what their sign said in that newspaper. Amen. So we just thank God that now, amen, our day is based upon the day that God has made for us. Amen. The day that we can rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. So it's not based upon what uh, my or my little sign says, amen. My sign is Jesus. And Jesus says that amen. we all want to have a blessed day and an awesome day. I just don't say a good day anymore. I've been saying lately, let's have a great day. Let's have an awesome day in the Lord. It's just not a simple day, but it's a great day because of what Jesus has done for each and every one of us. Amen. Uh, yes, Sister Ricky. Um, <laughs> you said some of what I was going to say, but my first thought was, uh, thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that has covered us for these things that were among us. But um, as we learn to walk in the light that shines from Jesus Christ, the more we know of God, the more those things become far removed from us. Even so, to the point that you can't imagine that people do them, but they're clearly have some shadow of darkness over them and that we just have to learn to um, remember where we were in part, but also know at the same time that only Jesus can set them free and that the more we know about God and the more we learn of him, the clearer we're able to worship him and to walk in that truth and to let those things uh, fall away, even as we had already learned in chapter four, if some of those things have to be stripped away, that we need to be far removed from them. Yes. Yes. Amen. Far removed. Thank you, Sister Ricky, from those things. Amen. And once again, um, that was a not just a casual strip of taking things off. Amen. It was almost like a violent strip, uh, strip that we must strip off uh, hatred and uh, unforgiveness and all those different things. Amen. Uh, and closing this part out, note the importance of rejecting these sins. They are not to be named even once among us. And the command is, is, a, is an imperative. Let it not be once named, not even mentioned once. You that is, your body is never to engage once again in fornication, uncleanness, or covetous acts. Note another fact. Such things are not even to be talked about. They're not to be named, talked about, or mentioned in our conversations. Immorality and, and decent conversations and jokes are to be the farthest things from the mind of the believer who follows God. God has nothing to do with such dirt and filth. Amen. And the last scriptures for tonight, uh, Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. First Timothy 1 and 5. Now the end of of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and faith and unfeigned love. Amen. Uh, I think I read those scriptures then. Yeah. Um, last one, once again, Second Peter 3, 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye be, may be found in, of him in peace without spot and blameless. Second Peter 3, 14. Amen. Um, we're going to pause and stop right there. Next week, we're going to pick up with uh, the believer's duty as far as the tongue, speech, and conversation. Um, at this point, we're going to open the floor up for final uh, discussion and talk. Um, does anyone have anything that they um, would like to share of what they got out of, out of the lesson on tonight before we put you in the hands of our pastor for closing remarks and announcements for this week? Anybody would like to share? 
Everybody good? No, I'm, I'm trying to see. Okay, I'm trying to look all over the screen. <laughs> no, I'll just say um, just being obedient to God's word and having the love come from your heart and, and, and you know, doing the word of God, not just speaking it and, and being, um, as we were talking about earlier, uh, it's, it's, it's got to come from your heart. You have to love the Lord, but you have to love each other. Um, and how can you love the Lord without loving each other? Um, and yet, again, we have to be obedient to God's word. Um, and there's nothing that we aren't willing to do to be obedient to God's word. Um, it's just so important that we love our Lord, but love each other enough, you know, as uh, Sister Ricky said, you know, being open, being honest. Um, and Pastor was saying, but at, at the same time, it is important to know the word of God, as you had mentioned earlier, um, so that you can be continually being disciple, continually um, following the word of God. Um, but like I said, just being obedient to the word of God and loving, you know, loving our Lord and Savior, uh, looking at what he did on the cross. And why we should be doing that for each other. And as you read the scriptures earlier, not just for each other, but for our fellow mankind, for men all over the world. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Kevin. Anybody else would like to share before we are uh, facing the hands of Pastor? Amen. Everybody is all good. Awesome. Um, once again, we covered on tonight and the last two Wednesdays. Um, we learned uh, by uh, God wants us to be followers of him by following and imitating him, um, by sharing and walking in the love that he has displayed toward us, and also by being clean, amen, and pure at heart and pure in everything that we do. And next week, we'll pick up at number four, which we are to be clean as well with our mouth and our speaking, amen, and we'll go on from there, because uh, that's going to be good as well. Amen. So at this time, if there's no other uh, comments, I'm going to um, place you in the hands of our pastor for closing remarks at this time. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Kenny, the teacher. An awesome lesson. I was thinking as different ones were sharing, um, the thought came to me about sanctification. You know, salvation is one aspect of the redemption However, sanctification is a lifelong process. And so we are all being sanctified as we walk through this journey. And uh, as I heard Dick and Kevin say uh, about being an imitator or a follower means that you need to be obedient. Also, the thought came to me is that our level of love for our brothers and our sisters determines our level and love that we have for Jesus and for God. Yes. You know, if we if we're yes. walking around with any type of malice or anything that's in our in our hearts towards our sisters, our brothers, whomever, you know, we need to put a check. We need to check it. We need to put it need to check, you know, and making sure that the line is clear. Mm -hmm. that the line is clear between us and our savior mm -hmm. also when dick and kevin was talking i thought about the scripture in leviticus 19 31 where it says do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists for you will be defiled by them mm -hmm. i am the lord your god now that's a scripture that you know maybe somehow some way you know, you can let your friend know, but you have to really be tactful because mm -hmm. when people start uh, uh, checking out mediums and, and, and palm readers, they're opening up a portal for satanic and demonic attacks. Yeah. I mean, bad attacks because mm -hmm. that was the one thing that happened, you know, to Saul. You know, uh, when Saul contacted that median, 
and, and he was the one that it says, um, for rebellion is okay now, for rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance, like the evil of idol idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, and he has rejected you as king. That was talking about Saul, because mm -hmm. Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep yes. the word of the Lord and even consulted a medium for guidance. Wow. So, and yeah, the very thing he was teaching against, he did. Yeah, so. Wow. It's it, oh, an awesome lesson. You know, it's, if when we fall short, you know, all we need to do is repent, get up, confess, and ask the Lord to forgive us. But if we <laughs> fail not to uh, allow this word to work in our lives, it's our choice. Because, I mean, it's just as clear as day. Yes. It's just as clear as day. So mm. we thank God for the fact that he gave himself for us an offering that we <laughs> might be, you know, free. Delivered, smell mm. good. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> yes. It's a beautiful lesson. Wow. Yes. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Pastor. Uh, like I said, it's just been a blessing to me. Um, I pray that, you know, it's been a blessing to you guys as well. And um, just as Pastor just closed with, amen, giving Deacon Kevin some ammunition to even help him. Uh, deal with that situation. Amen. This is uh, what it's all about. Amen. As she said, I love the fact, because I was thinking as well that um, we never stop growing. Amen. And when she uh, put it the way she put it, with, um, we're, be, uh, the, be, we're being sanctified. Amen. And, and that's the thing that really blessed me on tonight in closing is that, you know, we're, we're being sanctified. We're walking and learning. Amen. Uh, to be holy, to be set apart, amen, to be used for his glory, amen. We just not, um, uh, as they say, playing church, amen. We truly want God to change and, and do the things necessary in our lives to make us, amen, the people he wants us to be in the earth to bring him glory, amen. We just don't want to say glory to God, all glory to God, but we want our speech, our lives, amen, how we love each other, how we love our husbands, our wives, our children, our neighbors, our workmates, amen. He, we don't, God doesn't want just talkers, but he wants doers, amen, and we want to be, as Deacon Kevin shared that scripture last week, amen, we want to be doers of his word, amen, not just talk, amen, I've been stuck on that for a while, at least about eight or nine months, amen, that we don't want to be lights, camera, action, amen, but we want to always feel like the camera is on us to share the things of God, because we are to bring light, amen, to a dark world, amen, so when the light is on, that means that we should be doing the things of God, not just on the spotlight moments, but each and every moment of our lives, we are to bring God glory, amen, and to bring him honor in this earth. That's what we're called to do, amen. I can go on and on, but uh, uh, I can talk too much and uh, ramble, as they say. So I'm going to uh, stop right there. Um, I'm going to share my screen. We don't have uh, many announcements, actually just one announcement this week. Um, and that is our uh, time of restoration radio broadcast tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. on WTMR uh, radio, uh, 800 a.m. on the radio dial, 800, um, sorry, 800 on the a.m. radio dial and WTMR radio.com at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. tomorrow. Um, our pastor is continuing for a new series, Matters of the Heart, Part 3, Matters of the Heart, Part 3. I tell you, if you have not tuned in, you need to tune in because these lessons have been a blessing to me and blessing to uh, many people who um, are listening to these around the world. Amen. You also can um, listen tomorrow at 10 a.m. at rcfchurch.org, uh, Restoration Christian Fellowship Church on our podcast, both Google and Apple podcast as well. Amen. I love being able to say that Restoration has a Google podcast and an Apple podcast. We also have a Facebook page. We also have a YouTube page. All the things that maybe the enemy has made for uh, evil, God is letting us be in position to use it for his glory. Amen. Each one of these platforms, God is letting us, amen, be able to promote the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Free of charge at that. 
Amen. So uh, it's a blessing. Amen. Uh, ways you can get in contact with Restoration and give to Restoration, you can go to our Cash App, uh, Cash App, uh, dollar symbol RCF Church SJ. Um, also, you can give at rcfchurch.org in our giving page. Uh, also, uh, previous broadcasts uh, can be found on our YouTube um, channel, RCF Church SJ. Also, on our Facebook page, every Sunday and Wednesday night, our Bible study and Sunday morning, both uh, the full service and just the message are posted, amen, on our Facebook page and YouTube page. Our Facebook page is RCFCSJ, RCFC. SJ. Amen. So uh, once again, give it up for restoration, 37 years of ministry and doing the awesome things God want us to do on the earth. We thank God for our pastors, our late overseer, Joseph L. Ingram, and our pastor, uh, Emma Jean Ingram, uh, being led by the spirit to, to start restoration. And as we uh, enter this month, amen, 37 years of uh, ministry um, that we celebrated uh, last month. And I pray that our pastor, which she was, she was blessed uh, because I had the opportunity to work with her yesterday in the studio on that brand new laptop and uh, everything went smooth. Amen. Because the yeah. church blessed her with that awesome laptop. Amen. <laughs> I Amen. also, Pastor Ken, I also yeah. received a letter from the mayor today congratulating me for 37 years of uh, ministry. Awesome. So I'll, I'll bring it for Ricky to read on send it to the congregation. Yes. You know, awesome. I, it surprised me. Yes. So I thank the Lord for that. Yes. Amen. As they say, you never know who's watching from a distance. Amen. And admiring yes. what, what we're doing. So um, it is truly a blessing, Pastor. Um, yeah, for, his glory, for his yeah. glory. Yes. Amen. So the spirit is definitely moving high. So I know when I say this, what I'm about to say, all the hands going to go up all at once. So I'm going to have to figure out who hand goes up first. Who would like to close us out in prayer at this time? Going once, twice. I think Kevin, I think Kevin uh, hand went up first. I'm going to have to um, like mute you two because it seemed like Ricky, Pastor, and Kevin do all the praying. Amen. And uh, Brother Lou prayed last week. So I'm very grateful and thankful for that as well. So uh, Deacon Kevin, if you can close us out, I appreciate it. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord. Oh, Father, Father, Father. Thank you, Lord and Savior. Thank you, King Jesus. Glory to thy mighty, wonderful, holy, precious name. Father, dear Christ, Father, we thank you on this wonderful evening, dear Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your wonderful touch, your wonderful anointing, your wonderful blessing upon us all, dear Lord. Thank you, King Jesus, for waking us up, dear Lord, allowing us uh, to go about our day and to congregate, dear Lord, on this Wednesday night Bible study, dear Lord. It could not happen without you, Father. It could not happen without your grace and your mercy, dear Lord. It could not happen without you touching our hearts, dear Lord. So, Father Christ, dear Lord, I, I thank you, dear Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father. And dear Lord, I lift up every uh, person that is represented, every uh, member, every body, uh, dear Lord, every part of the body, dear Lord, that is represented here on this evening, dear Lord. Father, I pray that you bless them, dear Lord, with a great night, with a great uh, sleep um, tonight, dear Lord. And Father, dear Lord, I thank you for the uh, the leader, dear Lord, of restoration, Senior Pastor M.G. Ingram, dear Lord, for the teacher, Father, of the hour, dear Lord, Elder Kenny, dear Lord. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, um, just how your blessing has come down, dear Lord, and allowed us, dear Lord, to be followers of your word, dear Lord. And uh, dear Lord, I pray that we are more doers of your word, dear Lord, um, from our hearts, dear Lord. Uh, uh, and that we don't just speak, Heavenly Father, but we are actually doers and doers of your will, dear Lord, doers of your way, Heavenly Father, that we are representatives, dear Lord, that we are ambassadors, Heavenly Father, of your word, dear Lord, that we represent you, dear Lord, that our light shine, Heavenly Father, throughout the world, dear Lord. We just thank you, Heavenly Father. And dear Lord, uh, we want to... Um, just lift up, Heavenly Father, um, as I just continue to hear about those that 
that live in 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 the uh, assisted uh, homes there, Lord, the assistant adults and what's um, just happening to the people there, Lord. Father, I, I, I just pray for these adults there, Lord, that may be taken advantage of there, Lord. Father, I could uh, I just pray, Heavenly Father, that you would send your ministering angels there, Lord, to have someone um, just speak a word to them there, Lord, to share the word there, Lord, as they transition on the way out there, Lord. Um, these people are, are not being reached in all these uh, facilities, Heavenly Father. I pray, F Father Christ there, Lord, for um, Sister Jamie, Father there, Lord, and what she um, is going through there, Lord, right now there, Lord. I pray that her blood pressure be brought up, Heavenly Father, yes, and Amen. back to normal there, Lord. Um, and I pray, Heavenly Father, that that she be a living testimony there, Lord, what, about what you're about ready to do in her life or, or what you have already done in her life there, Lord. I lift up um, all those that are suffering, Heavenly Father, for the gunshots that have happened o over the last few days there, Lord. Yeah, and yeah. Father, as uh, someone had called uh, Mischief Night and Halloween there, Lord, but Father, those days belong to you, dear Lord. You are the originator of days, dear Lord. You said you made those days, dear Lord. Father, I pray that we just not give these days over to the enemy, dear Lord, and allow them just to rejoice in this wickedness, dear Lord. But Father, I pray, dear Lord, that as these Halloween days and, and whatever days come yeah. along, dear Lord, that your light is allowed to shine, dear Lord, that we're able to speak up and share your word there, Lord. And I rebuke uh, that spirit of fear there, Lord, that we are able to go out and, and speak your word and share the message of the gospel there, Lord. Um, for uh, we know there, Lord, the time is near, Heavenly Father. We don't have time to waste there, Lord, about speaking to others about the gospel, about your word there, Lord. For each and every single day, Heavenly Father, uh, uh, it's, it, we, we pray that it's not wasted there, Lord that we take advantage of, of the days, the hour, the time that we have to be able to speak to our coworkers, uh, someone that we meet on the street, someone that we might meet in the stores and the highways and the byways there, Lord. Father, we, we, we pray for each precious moment, each precious second, Heavenly Father, uh, that you give us the, the time uh, to speak to others there, Lord, before it's too late. Yeah. And Father, I, I don't want to end there, Lord, uh, without um, just saying a prayer for Israel, dear Lord, and what they're yeah, going yeah. through. Uh, Father, I pray, dear Lord, that you uh, touch the, the commanders and, and the leaders, the generals, dear Lord, the, the, yes. um, yeah. the leaders over there in, in Israel, dear Lord, as we yeah. mentioned yeah. about following and, and, uh, and being obedient, Heavenly Father. But uh, Father, I pray, dear Lord, that they be obedient to your word there, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that the ministering angels uh, continue yeah, to bless yes. Israel and cover them there, Lord, on all fronts there, Lord. We know the enemy is, is upset with them all around their country there, Lord. Yeah. It may be only attacks in certain areas there, Lord, but we know that they're plotting and planning there, Lord, uh, mm -hmm. for, for different areas there, Lord. But Father, whatever... Uh, weapon is formed against them, dead Lord, it shall not prosper, dead Lord. Yeah. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the blessing of Israel, uh, the leaders, for guidance and wisdom, dead, dead Lord, that they may know what direction to go, dead Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to them, um, Holy Spirit, uh, uh, so that the Lord's will will be done, dear Lord, and that God will receive all the glory and all the honor, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Yeah. And Father, dear Lord, we do pray for peace on all fronts, dear Lord. We pray, we pray for those, Heavenly Father, the innocent, as well as the um, the enemy, dear Lord. We pray for their souls, dear Lord, uh, that none shall be lost, dear Lord. But Father, we pray for the families, dear Lord, uh, as they're dealing with the loss of loved ones, Heavenly Father. We don't know everything that's going on, dear Lord, but you know and you see all things, Heavenly Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, for this country not to turn its back, dear Lord, on Israel, dear Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those uh, uh, churches that will stand up uh, uh, 
and 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 just be committed in prayer there lord for israel there lord and for the body of christ and for the world there lord and father i also pray there lord that this country be protected there lord yes. for we know the yes. enemy may be plotting also in this country and then around the world against the Jews and against the Christians there, Lord, against the yeah. Muslims, Heavenly Father. Yeah. So we just thank yeah. you, Heavenly Father, that your ministry angels be about there, Lord, um, seeking and searching there, Lord, uh, um, for whom there, Lord, that your blessing may, may go forth there, Lord. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, on this evening there, Lord. And again, Heavenly Father, I pray that we have a great night's sleep there, Lord. As we go out um, tomorrow, dear Lord, that we have a great day, dear Lord, to share your gospel, Heavenly Father. We just thank you for all, dear Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We yes. thank you, dear Lord, for those that are dealing with sickness, dear Lord, that you would touch them gotcha. and heal them, dear Lord. Yes. In Jesus' wonderful name, dear Lord, I pray and I pray only. Amen and amen. 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 Once again, I uh, thank everyone for joining and all the participation that was given on tonight. And I just want to feel led to close with this on tonight. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord Amen. make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In Jesus' name, be blessed. And we look forward be to blessed. the next Amen. class. Amen. 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 Good night, all. Good night. <laughs>